my name's Tom. Um, this is the 10th of December reading, uh, Why Jesus is Better Than Santa. Uh, first, we're going to read through Ruth 2, uh, verses 10 to 13. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favour in your eyes, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me, and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done, and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then she said, I have found favour in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. A couple of years ago, a video did the rounds on social media of a young boy getting warned by his dad that his bad behaviour would put him on Santa's naughty list. The kid gets visibly affronted by this and responds with comical indignation. Well, Father Christmas is not being very nice to me. Whether or not your household does Santa, many people imagine God as a kind of comic Father Christmas. Perhaps we feel we need to be on our best behaviour because otherwise God will find out who's naughty or nice. But thankfully, the gospel is much better than Santa, and Ruth chapter 2 is going to help us see why. God has led Ruth to Boaz's field, where she has encountered his stunning generosity. In response, Ruth asks Boaz a question, which takes us to the heart of the gospel. Bowing her face in a humble disbelief, Ruth asks, Why have I found such favour in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? It's sometimes said that we live in an entitlement generation. Look at the way that Christmas lists turn into Christmas demands or how festive gatherings can quickly boil over as someone takes offence at the slightest remark. And maybe the entitlement can spill over into how we approach God, but not so with Ruth. For a start, she knew she was at the bottom of the rung of the ladder in terms of her cultural social standing a widow, a foreigner, and worst of all, a Moabite. She was an outsider to God's covenant promises, and so she bows her face. So why had Boaz noticed her? Boaz's answer seems intriguing. He acknowledges how Ruth has treated Naomi, and then he blesses her. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. Is Boaz suggesting Ruth has earned his kindness? A bit like how we think about Santa. Is Boaz just rewarding Ruth's actions with bundles of grain rather than sacks of coal? Boaz is pointing out that the, ultimately Ruth has received blessing because she turned and trusted in the Lord. His description of Ruth's actions even evokes memories of Abraham's faith. But don't miss the wonder of Boaz's final remark. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. It is the imaginary imagery of a baby bird seeking protection under the wings of their parent. But of course, in such a scenario, we praise the provision and security of the parent rather than the efforts of the juvenile. Likewise, Ruth has humbly come in repentance and faith to the Lord. Consequently, she is now enjoying a taste of the gracious blessing found under his wings. As such, we praise God for his kindness rather than pat ourselves on the back.